Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for taking the time to join us this afternoon to work through our um, staff survey. So the purpose of this session is to take a bit of time out to consider some of the feedback that we received as a consequence of um, last year's staff survey and then to take the opportunity to work through um, some of the priority areas, the areas that we think that we um, should focus on for Nottinghamshire healthcare um, over the, the coming months. And those are at a sort of trust-wide level. Um, so the process that we're going to go through to do that is um, I'm going to go through a number of slides to give everybody a bit of an overview um, around some of the feedback that we received. And then we are going to break out into two um, groups. That's going to happen automatically, apparently. You stay where you are and virtually you'll be taken into two different uh, groups. And then we'll have some facilitated sessions. Um, I think Ale Alex Lyons and Alison Shields are going to work with John Bruin and myself and um, colleagues to go through um, some of those uh, some of those areas that we think that at a trust level we should start to to focus on. So that's the rough format for the session that we've got today. Again, thank you for taking the time um, out to, to do this with us. It is really important um, and it's really important that we hear from you about um, the things that you think will matter and, and make the difference. So I will pause there and um, before we go to the slides, I'll invite John Bruin, Chief Executive, in to say a few words about the staff survey and some of his uh, thoughts and reflections. Yeah, thanks, Claire. Um, thanks, Alex. Thanks, everybody, for um, joining. Um, you're really welcome. Um, some of you might be thinking, oh, I'm not sure I'm on the right call or I'm not sure I know what to say or um, having other anxieties about it. But um, you are really welcome. And I think one of the important things about this is I'm that fine. we want to get as many people's contribution and feedback into this as possible. That's what will make it um, strong and build on some of the really good progress we're making. So I'm um, really looking forward to um, to everybody being get, able to get involved and make their contributions. And this is just a start. So uh, again, we'll be looking to, to, to sort of embed this across the organisation in terms of breadth, but also over a longer term piece. This isn't, isn't just a you know, an, ish, an initiative for the next few months that we'll get interested about in and then sort of drop off. And um, this is core. And to go into the, uh, just a, a bit of background staff survey, um, for those of you that um, may just have been on the receiving end of a load of emails saying, fill it in, fill it in. Um, why is it important? It's, it's important because um, it's probably the most um accurate reflection of um an answer to the question how is the organization doing and um, because it's the, the content of that answer is supplied by the staff that work in it and therefore it's a really rich source and by and large um it's pretty accurate because it's what people feel and what people put in anonymously to set questions and also into um, the free text feedback. And I know there's a lot of conversation about, well, is it really anonymous? But it is. Um, we don't get any uh, anywhere near, and we wouldn't want to um, individual identifiers. We can, we can look at, as you'll see later, we can look at professional groups overall. We can look at um, divisions where there's um, either outstanding performance or or issues where there's a sort of collection of concerns so it's informative from that position but it it, it is rich and it's it's uh, like I say the um, most useful bit of feedback we get you can imagine there's a whole sort of national infrastructure around the analysis of the results so this analysis is provided for us and um, then we can start to drill down at a more local level. 
and it gives you two comparison, two main headline comparisons. It compares your organisation with how you did in previous years, so you can get a longitudinal view of your progress or not. Um, but it also compares you with your what are called peer organisations, so similar organisations that provide similar range of services to yours. So you can get um, an average score, your score, and then you compare yourself with best and worst performers in those categories. So it gives you a sense of where you are, um, both in time and um, uh, across um, sector. And um, within that, as we'll start to talk about, there's a real um, diverse um, picture of various themes and things. And today is about identifying some of those headlines and celebrating what has been a, a remarkable turnaround in the last year, um, which is down to everybody on this call um, and everybody that's filled the form in and everybody that puts the passion into what they believe in they want to do to, to make a difference in improving the, the experience of patients, service users and carers. Um, so that's um, that's a really important thing for us not to lose sight of, the, the really significant improvement. But the sharp-eyed amongst you will also see that despite that really significant improvement, it takes us into average. So comparatively to our peer trusts, we're we're about the same as most. Um, the remarkable thing is that is the amount of turnaround we've done in a sort of 18 months, two year period, because this is like a big tanker and a big oil tanker on the ocean, this organisation to to make the, the, the cultural um, changes that, that we're doing takes takes a while. But we started um, to shift things. Um, and now the conversation today and leading on from here is, OK, so how do we build on that? Um, what what are the next steps? Where do we look to provide additional support? How can we how can we galvanize the, the, the innovation and the leadership and the passion to really move us into the upper echelons of the scores? Um, and just to finish, whilst the, you know, the league table and the scores are important, um, and it's nice to be in the in the top part. And um, the bottom line is 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 that bit of a cliche that you know staff working in 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 well supported teams with good managers and good leaders are happy staff, and happy staff lead to happy patients. Um, that's why we do it, isn't it? That's why we come to work. We want the best for the people that use our services. And, and this is a really, um, really bright window into 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 that world. So um, that's as much as I'd like to say by way of intro, um, Claire and Alex. Thank you very much. And um, obviously, we can pick some of this up throughout the, the presentation. Thank you. Thanks, John. So um, as I said, I think to start with, we're going to run through just a series of slides. Um, not sure um, how familiar colleagues on the, the call are with all of the details of the staff survey. So to help, and I think just get us all to the same kind of understanding, we thought it would be useful just to run through a series of slides. So please forgive us if you've been through these in, in absolute detail and, and know it, but we, we wanted to just make sure that um, everyone had had the opportunity just to be able to digest some of the feedback um, from from last time. So this slide just sets out the process really that we have followed to date and that we intend to follow in terms of moving us through understanding the staff survey feedback and collating and co-producing some of the responses. So just by way of a, a reminder, the survey um, was cascaded to all colleagues between September and December last year. And we got the results back and collated for us by the national team in March of this year. And we have been sharing those at a trust-wide and um, divisional and team level um, since we got the feedback last month. Um, the process now is that 
we are going to start and design and co-produce some of those responses and today's session is about the focus at a trust-wide level but just to say there is also work that has started within the divisions um, to uh, to design the response within the divisional areas and the OD team here are also using the feedback to help um, work with some some individual um, individual teams so that work will will go on and um, based on today's outputs we will take away the feedback and and as I say then think about what are the onward actions for us to roll out and work on over the next few months I'll talk a little bit more um, as we go through the slides about some of the um, the staff survey changes that there are nationally as well but just to flag and the staff survey approach nationally for NHS organisations is changing and there will be the usual annual staff survey but that will also be supported by three other surveys that take place throughout the year which aren't as long or as detailed but do what we would call a, a pulse check a sense check on how colleagues are feeling at a point in time and the first one of those surveys will take place in July of, of this year so I just wanted to share that as an onward um, development. As I said, whilst today we are focusing on the trust-wide um, response, um, it is just to say that in terms of the clinical service areas, as an example, and it has also happened to a degree with some of the corporate um, teams as well, uh, work has started to happen in operational areas to think about what will be the three key things that um, teams and divisional areas could focus on and you'll see there some of the high level things that um, for community health services, forensic services and mental health services, each of those divisions using their feedback uh, to inform what their priorities will be over the next over the next few months. So you might want to look at some of that in terms of um, going into some of the workshop areas and considering how that does or doesn't relate to some of what we might want to do at a trust uh, wide level. For colleagues who may not be um, aware, this year there were a couple of changes to the National Staff Survey, so some of you might be more familiar with it than, than others in terms of its format, but generally it's had over the years um, a number of uh, set questions that have remained the same and have been consistent. Broadly, they were consistent this year with other years. However, some of those, um, some changes were made to the questions to reflect the fact that we were in a pandemic and there were some COVID specific questions that were asked and some questions were removed. So overall, there were slightly um, less questions than in previous years. So if you were looking to compare something specific and couldn't see it there, it's likely that it will be one of those questions that's been removed. So I just wanted to signal signal that to you. So on to some of what our survey told us and, and over the next few slides we'll go through some of these some of these results. Um, so in terms of what the survey overall um, this year our response rate improved um, significantly. So we had a 10.9 percent increase and uh, for us that put our overall response rate at 55.6 percent and for as an indicator, generally, the higher the response rate um, shows that there is um, usually higher staff engagement within, um, within an organisation where that happens. So that was really positive. And um, we were above um, average for our comparator groups for, uh, for, for this organisation. And as I say, it was good to see a positive increase and it was good because that demonstrates better all overall colleague engagement. So that was a really encouraging um, response for us. And in terms of numbers of colleagues that responded to the survey within the organisation, um, this year and in, in the couple of the years previously, it has been everybody within the organisation has had the opportunity to complete the um, staff survey and the response rate this year meant that it, we'd had the highest number of responses um, from colleagues within the, the organisation 
overall. Um, so overall theme and results. This this survey, I think it's quite nice because it illustrates um, the 10 themes that there are overall covered in the, in the staff survey. And it shows how we've performed in each of those domains. And we are going to look underneath some of these high level results as we go through the presentation. But just in terms of what this slide shows, it showed that overall, uh, we have improved in nine out of the, the ten domains and in one of the domains um, we've stayed pretty much the same. As John um, indicated though in his um, opening slot, whilst we have improved for a number of those domains it still um, only means that we are average so it means we do know that we're not complacent about the improvement and that there is still quite a bit of work um, for us to do. But to improve um, overall across those domains is quite unusual actually. You usually see organisations making an improvement in one or two of them rather than across the board. And where that put us um, as a trust is that in terms of our comparator group, we were the most improved uh, mental health and community trust in our comparator group um, nationally. So that was also something that was significant and encouraging. In terms of the significance testing, what this slide shows and the colours illustrate is that for the for the across the ten areas, those in green showed that the response meant that we had significantly improved against ourselves in terms of our previous year's results for that area. So that showed a significant improvement overall this year in nine out of ten of the domains. And in the safe environment domain, we had stayed the same as in previous years. You can see that in terms of the 2018, 19 and 2020 um, results. So that was that was really important to us. And um, we think, and as we've gone through some of the analysis, that some of that, not all of it, but some of that is due to some of the previous work that we've done collectively and that's been co-produced across the organisation, certainly um, in the last two years. So um, just to remind people about what some of that is, we co-produced our new trust values and behaviours and we've launched those and rolled those out. We have done some work around um, continuing to um, develop our staff equality and diversity networks and we also co-produced and set up the staff health and well-being offer which was launched in April of last year. So they're not the only things but they are examples of how we've taken the previous feedback from colleagues and done what we're doing now really and um, co-produced co that, that trust-wide um, response in terms of two or three areas of focus to try and improve um, staff experience across the organisation. So this goes into some of the areas in terms of some of the, the questions and shows where, where upon some of the questions we've um, improved most from last year and where we've least improved. And I think what's quite interesting, actually, where we've um, where we've improved the most, it is by quite a large percentage. So anything from 11 to 14 percent, whereas in the least improved areas, it is from 0 to, to 2 to 2 percent. And there are three questions overall that we've gone down in in terms of that that response. So um, they're listed there. Um, one of those questions is about. Um, colleagues saying that actually they did work additional hours and did feel that they had to go above, over and above their contractual hours. Um, colleagues were saying that they had experienced physical violence from patient service users and their relatives. And also colleagues have said that in the last 12 months they have experienced musculoskeletal problems as a result of work activities. So they, they were the three areas where we showed overall least improvement in terms of the detail of some of the, the questions. Before I go into some of the further breakdowns, I can see that um, some colleagues have been putting some questions and comments in the chat, and please do do that as we go as we go through. We'll have the opportunity to respond to some of those in this session and also in terms of the breakout sessions. But I'm just going to ask if anyone wants to ask a question 
And if you can, put your hand up or put something further in the chat. And if I can specifically bring in John and Alex to see if anything, if there's anything that they want to cover off and reference in terms of what we've just discussed. Yeah, can I, I just um, butt in first while people are putting their hands up and questions, just to draw your attention back to the, the previous slide, um, the, the, the green and red. Um, just to emphasise that green column most improved from last survey, people will spot that this isn't just two or three percent changes. These are, uh, you know, over ten percent, um, which again, like one of the other previous slides, is 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 really quite unusual to get such a um, to get such a, a significant improvement as this. And it's also put us into the the category of one of the most improved. Um, mental health community um, learned disability organizations in the country um, so th that just to give you a sense of a yay celebratory but um, also the magnitude of, of the improvement and this isn't just you know a few people in in the back office trying to squeeze um, a good news story out of something this is um, this is something that um, you don't see that often um, and everybody should be really pleased about um, or proud of the, not pleased, necessarily pleased, but <laughs> proud of the contribution that um, everyone's made to get us this this kickstart. It, it's, it's been brilliant to see. Thanks, Claire. Thanks, John. Um, Alex, was there anything you wanted to add or come in and say? And, and colleagues, if there's, if there's anything else that you just want to... Um, cover off or ask as part of the slides that we've just been through. There's some more to go through, but it was an, an opportunity to pause and give other people the chance to comment. Um, all I was going to say, Claire, is just based on the questions that are in the chat, um, that um, the uh, Charlotte Wood has asked about whether the personal development questions will into the survey and I know that what those were specifically around was um, have you had your appraisal and was that useful so I know that they haven't asked that, that this this time um, due to the pressures of COVID so as the first slide one of the first slides shown um, there was some questions that they didn't ask um, also just to highlight that there is a there is a significant piece of work that's happening nationally um, which we'll be looking at the um, staff survey questions moving forward um, and making sure that they're linked to um, all of the work that's happening so at the moment I can't say exactly what that will um, incorporate next year but I would hope that there would be some sort of emphasis on those as well so thank you thanks thanks Alex um John um just wonder if you want to come back in at this point about and um, there's a there's a couple of comments from colleagues about um people not completing the survey because they don't think um things are are done as a consequence of it and just whether there's any thoughts about what we can do better around communication on the sort of you said together we did approach because I think we've had that feedback before and I think it, it is really important that people see action and implementation as a consequence of what they say to us. Yeah thanks and um, I was just in the middle of, I'm not really quick at typing now but halfway through a response to, to Trish and um, thanks to your, your question Trish absolutely and um, really good points uh, sort of two main ones really is that um Staff won't fill in because they feel it's a waste of time as nothing gets done. And that's um, exactly the reason for, for this sort of event today, to, um, to make sure that we embed um, the, the culture around um, feedback and moving forward. And, and it's captured, as you say, Claire, by that phrase, you said together we did. Um, and it's really important it doesn't just sit on a shelf and and people ignore it so um as you said earlier for this year we need to we need to to have conversations with staff both individually and group in four like this to inform okay so what are the next steps what do we need to do more of what do we need to stop doing etc um the other point on trish's comment um is that it's management, only management to complete in the survey, so it's not a true representation. Um, so um, there's 
there's the templated questions, but there's also um, a space for um, free text at, at the end. And we get reams of commentary from people who are clearly across all sorts of front lines, Trish, um, giving um, very clear thoughts as to um, what the issues are, um, some of the stuff that's gone well and some of the stuff that hasn't. Um, so we get a really clear sense that um, that we're, we're getting a rich feedback from not just managers. Um, and obviously part of what we want to do is to get as many people feeling able to, to give feedback as possible. That's, that's the key to it. Um, what else is in the chat there in terms of questions? There's, there's, um, so, so Trish has, has come back with a suggestion as well about talking to people in environments where, you know, people do feel that they can speak up and can speak openly and honestly and not, not clam up because their managers or supervisors might, might be around. And I think that we would always want to create a space where people do feel able to say what they, they need to say if we can't get to to a position of, of honest feedback, then it, it doesn't mean that we're able to respond in the, the right way. I don't know if there's anything you'd want to add to that, John. Yeah, I think, that's, again, it's a really good observation of and, and, and chimes with some of the work that we're doing, Trish, around um, working into these closed cultures, the work that we're doing um, around just and restorative culture. and. Um, it does go back to culture and values that, um, and I said this before on on different platforms. That I think the trust has lost its way over recent years in um, building an environment where people and staff feel able to say, "Hang on a minute, um, this is a bit of a concern. Or I've got an issue with this," and um, we we can all be familiar with it, can't we? That um, you, you you end up finding yourself in a team where there's there's a different narrative when the the managers are around and and, and when they're not um, and um, a lot of the work that we're trying to do is to is to help both the organization and the teams within it move away from where we've got that and there's obviously a lot of variation across the trust different types of of team issues but this this goes to the heart of it and if we if we can continue to build and create opportunities and safe spaces and develop manager skills and leaders skills to to move this forward then we'll, we'll begin to get ourselves into a into a better place um so it yeah it's an important part of the work and it's it's an important part of what we need to feed into okay so the, what, what do we do next Okay, um, there's a couple of other things that have come up in the chat. I'm going to move us through, and then if there's this comment, if there's, uh, we can pick up some questions at the end, and also we've got the, the breakout rooms, if that's if that's okay. Um, but please continue to put your questions in, and um, we're not ignoring questions that are there. We are going to pick them up. I'm just going to move us through the next lot of slides, if I can. The next um, set of slides just take us through a bit of the detail. So um, in the previous slides, I said to you there were 10 domains and that highlighted the overall response and the high level feedback. These next slides just take us a level down a bit just to see what some of the detail that sits behind some of those overall all responses. And again, you may find these useful just to inform some of the next discussion in the breakout um, sections. So this slide um, looks at health and well-being and as I said, looks at the musculoskeletal issues. So what colleagues did raise, so overall, in terms of our organisation's response to supporting staff health and wellbeing, we'd seen an overall improvement. But what we have seen is that the number of, uh, there have been a number of colleagues who have experienced musculoskeletal problems as a result of workplace activities in the last 12 months and that's actually increased so that's a deterioration um, regarding health and well-being in that regard and those experiences for those colleagues. Again this is related to health and well-being and um, immediate managers and what this says is that for um, line managers 
um, interest and support of colleagues' health and well-being, we haven't improved as much as other organisations. So again, whilst overall our um, the health and well-being feedback that we've had shows that we've done better to support colleagues on some individual themes, we haven't, and there's probably some more work for us to to do. So. This slide shows where we are on morale and there has been a significant improvement with regard to morale and people's overall experience of working with us and it shows a significant um, increase in the number of people who are planning to leave and go elsewhere and if I go back to previous years, certainly in the previous three years, this was a deteriorating trend for us where people were actively saying that they were actively looking to leave the organisation. So this is really encouraging to see in terms of how people are feeling and the fact that they do want to stay employed and working with us. So in terms of safety and a safe environment, um, again, this is this is somewhere where overall we didn't improve, we've stayed the same. And in terms of some of the feedback that sits behind that particular high level feedback, we do know that people have fed back to say that they've personally experienced physical violence from patients, service users and the public. And in some, um, some isolated cases from their colleagues um, as well whilst at, whilst at work. So this is something where overall we've stayed pretty much the same, but there has been an increase, particularly in terms of people saying that they've experienced violence um, from patients, service users and members of the public. So in terms of overall staff engagement and um, the colleagues saying that they would recommend um, the trust as a place to work and or receive treatment. These were two areas where there was a significant um, improvement. So there was an increase of 10.5% of people saying that they would recommend the organisation as a place to receive treatment and nearly 15% um, increase in people saying that they would recommend the trust as a place to work. So those are two really positive endorsements um, in terms of the care that people feel that we provide here and the overall experience for colleagues working here. So we're just going to go on to um, the final set of slides and focus on equality, diversity and inclusion. Before I do, um, does anyone want to pick up on any of the questions in the chat or does anybody want to um, say anything specific? So Scott, I think one of Scott's questions, I think, touches on some of what we've said around um, some of the direct engagement of line managers to support people at an individual level and um, within within teams and some of the wider work that we've probably got to do around um, bullying in the workplace and some of those um, some of the the feedback that we've had around some of the violence that's been experienced um, particularly in some of those frontline service areas okay I'll move through the slides um, that now focus specifically on equality and diversity and inclusion couple of slides and the reason that I thought it was really um, important to do this was we we get the overall data for the organisation and then we look at it through lots of different lenses and cut that data in lots of different ways so that we can get a really rich um, look at, at what the feedback is actually um, actually telling us. And whilst we've um, said that overall we're really encouraged by the, uh, by the improvements that we've seen, when we look at the responses to um, the staff survey questions, um, for example, by ethnicity, it does show us that the overall experience of BME colleagues within the organisation isn't as good um, as it is for white colleagues within the organisation. And we have seen an increase, an 8% um, increase in um, people particularly saying that some of the um, negative experiences that they've been on the end of, um, we talk about violence and aggression, that's not always um, physical violence, um, but the responses have said, have shown us that there has been an overall increase in terms of um, bullying and harassment and negative experiences on the grounds of people's uh, race and ethnicity 
So I think that's something that does need some um, attention. And also, when we um, look at the data from a disability perspective, again, we see the same um, we see the same sort of uh, concerns in terms of the responses. In that, our disabled members of staff overall, their experience uh, at work isn't as good as non-disabled um, colleagues when we look at the responses to the individual staff survey um, results. Um, a number of disabled colleagues have said that they have um, felt unwell um, and have experienced work-related stress as a consequence of um, being at work. And there's a higher proportion of colleagues with disabilities that have disclosed that as their experience compared to non-disabled staff at work. So this looks at engagement um, comparisons by, by professions. Um, so we look at the data in a number of ways and it gives you um, a bit of an overview as to how different colleagues according to their profession are feeling and are experiencing um, are experiencing uh, work. John, did you want to say anything finally on that slide about the professions or any of the slides that we've covered off just in the last um, section? Because I think we're going to a pause then and then the breakout rooms. Yeah, thanks Claire. Um, not specifically, um, other than that, um, I suppose just to emphasise my, my point earlier that, um, sorry, got things to click off. Um, but whilst it's really important to celebrate um, a lot of the good stuff and the improvements, um, we're not complacent and we know there's there's still an awful lot of work to do. And the last few slides particularly really highlight that, don't they, whether it's from a, um, a BME perspective, whether it's um, from a disability perspective, but also that um, the different professional groups, there's a real um, disparity in, in some of the scoring across those those groups, some almost wholly green, some wholly red. Um, and that really starts to help inform um, you know, where we go looking um, to, to continue to to work with, with our staff to, to, to move things forward. Um, so, uh, no, I think you've covered it off um, fine. Thanks, Claire. I've got nothing more to add at the moment. Thank you. OK, thanks. Um, so thanks. Thanks, colleagues. And I think um, that's there's a lot of information that sits behind the feedback for the, the staff survey. And you have got you can all have access and do have access to it because it is all on Connect. Um, but what hopefully those slides um, illustrated is is kind of um some of where at one level we've shown significant improvements and that's great and we need to harness that and, and embrace that and think about what we continue to do to continue to build on some of those improvements and equally ensure that we pay attention to to other areas where we've had feedback where people's experience isn't consistent with that of others and isn't what we would want it to be and so the the idea now is that we will um, we will take this information um, and hopefully that's positioned um, it for you all so that you're all up to speed and, and and reminded about where we are and what the staff survey told us this time and we're going to break out now into the two facilitated sessions um, and we're going to work on some of the trust-wide responses really. It's not to try and solve the issues but the conversation I accept is important but to think about what are the say the three key areas where you believe that we should focus as a whole trust to try and drive forward um, some of the improvements at scale and then out of that we will be coming back to you and other colleagues to co-produce some of the detail of what that looks like. Um, so I think we stay seated as we are and we are now um, by the uh, by by the process of Alex and technology and fingers crossed in a fair wind going to go into two uh, facilitated uh, sessions. So I hope that's clear to everybody. Um, Alex and um, Alison will be taking us through um, anyway. So with yeah. everything going as it should do, see you on the other side.
Do you, I don't know if you um, want to share um, the the feedback, Alison, and go through um, go through for a couple of minutes what was fed back from your group. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Rasheen helpfully captured a few bits. Um, oh, I'm seeing yes, the chat. That's pop yeah. up. Um, they're not for us, are they? Right. Okay. Oh, here's the whiteboard. Okay. Okay. So, um, so Nikki. Nikki started off, off asking asking um, a bit of a question around the free text that's gathered. Um, so how we how we go about using that and what do we do with it? Um, and and John clar clarified that you know that there is a lot of text there that needs um, a thematic analysis basically before then we can look at what that feedback is telling us and then open that up to having some conversations to explore that a little bit more. There's a really um, significant point raised around long COVID and how we support staff to recover and actually, you know, how do we do that? And that won't just be this year, you know, that's probably going to have long lasting implications. So what's the staff health and wellbeing um, response to that, thinking at sickness levels and, and also the vicarious trauma that has been experienced by by our staff. Um, so, so some conversation around that um, fairly quickly um we talked around the msk themes and, and wanting to understand a little bit more about that so wanting to find some some more detail have some curiosity around what's impacted on that that score to be so significantly different um and then how do we then look at what has been said by staff and then how can we support them to actually with the you said we did what could we do there um we talked a, quite a bit around um, trust and safety and that those concerns again that crop up again and again around staff not feeling confident to complete the staff survey so looking at that as a as a theme as you notice there was conversation there was all sorts of bits that popped up but we didn't necessarily get the three key areas to focus on for the year but lots of good stuff that we talked about talking about innovation how do we share innovation across the organization so we know that innovation happens it happens in pockets and areas but how are we sharing that how are we how are we learning that and could that be a staff um staff a, a trust wide you know recognition scheme could there be something something there that whereby we share and showcase those those um staff ideas talked about senior team visibility so not just locally in teams but trust wide as well and about how you know as the world is starting to come out of the the lockdowns and whether that will be a more of a possibility and the positivity of, of that happening and staff feeling able to to have those contributions to contribute their ideas to their senior leaders um and also safety was a a, a clear element to to not you know not not discuss so making sure that we are thinking about staff safety so whether that's psychological safety physical safety and also thinking about the community staff that sometimes are exposed to um scenarios whereby they, their safety needs to be paid attention to so yeah that in a nutshell sorry that's a little bit waffly of me but just looking at my notes that i've <laughs> captured building absolutely. on lessons learned from covid yeah absolutely thank you angela including the positives sorry if i've missed bits people <laughs> no that's absolutely great thank you ever so much alison and um, just going back to um the first question the first um point that was raised by Nikki just about the free text um, just to let you know that um, unlike previous years um, unlike previous years what um, this year they're, they're actually doing some thematic theme themed analysis um, with um, for us from from nationally um, and I think that's probably because of the um, the COVID question so the co the questions are very COVID specific um, with regards to what's gone right what's gone wrong so very similar in nature to the KISS survey that we did um, in May um, last year so um, we've had over 6,000 responses so I'll be honest um, and again this is my too much honesty 
in coming out. I have looked through those, um, but um, could not do all of that analysis in my head or by myself. So um, I'm waiting. The 30th of April is when that themed analysis will come through because literally all we've got is 6,000 rows of data. It's not broken down by who said it. It's not broken down by division, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's just um, that is coming, um, but it's going to be the 30th of April that that's actually that that's actually available so um just wanted to share share that um and absolutely from what you what you've um stated within within um the focus um that you that you've had the um lessons learned for that angela's written in here um from covid again absolutely looking at what's gone right what's gone wrong and there's um there is um that's where the a lot of the um feedback is coming from so as you can imagine um similar to the kiss from what i've read there's um there is information um, that's coming through about um, making sure that we're doing more with um, flexible working, that we're really looking at people working from home, supporting that, that we're looking at um, IT. Um, and so there's some of the there's some of the themes that have, have come through from the um, from that data. Um, with regards to um, what we were talking about within our breakout room, um, there was um, some of the same themes that came across. And I do apologise, my um, phone is just going nuts. Um, the some of the themes that were talked about. And Jenny, I don't know if you can share the um, the slide that we've got with the post-it notes on, please. Um, but with some of the things that we were talking about again linked to very much very similar to what you were saying health and well-being absolutely really looking at breaking down the msk information and the data looking at whether that's um people working from home working um working within um the clinical environment looking at the um information about um whether that's from our um disabled staff or uh or not just non-disabled staff and just having a look at some of those themes. Um, Vanessa was talking very much about making sure that we're doing this piece of work throughout the organisation that we're asking um, colleagues um, to um, really tell us what they think so that we're making sure that as we're going through this the, the cycle that we're, we're doing that from all different levels. So we're doing this from a, um, a trust perspective, from a team perspective um, and really looking at what we need to do across the organisation. And as you can see on some of the on some of these um, that we really some of the focus that we need to look at again is um, the um, support for our BME colleagues um, for um, we you know looking at making sure the um, bullying and harassment and the and the racism that's being um, experienced is is, um, is addressed that we're looking at um, supporting our disabled colleagues with um, through with presenteeism and issues that are being brought through from that um, but actually that we're also highlighting and showcasing some of the fantastic work that is happening and where the hot you know some of the really good processes and the strengths that are happening and looking at making sure that we're replicating that across the organisation and that um, as highlighted by Yolanda is really um, looking at making sure that what we do that um, we're communicating with uh, with colleagues about what's happening through every stage of, of what we're doing and that was some of the feedback I don't know if there was a, anything that anybody um, wish to wish to add to that but obviously what what we will do is, is share these slides later on thanks alex can i just add a couple of comments absolutely claire yeah so it's a really good discussion and um i think just some of the things that i thought came out from the slides were both thinking about what we continue to improve on because we've clearly done something that has had a good impact on people and at the same time think about um, where is it not perhaps working so well there was certainly health and well-being that was a theme from the this year's response because overall um, there was an improvement in that but some of the questions that sat underneath it it wasn't quite so good and probably need a bit of attention one was about um, MSK um, as, as an example and to, to pick up on to pick up on that so um, certainly as a, as a theme both building on what 
what has gone well and has improved and at the same time paying attention to some areas where perhaps um things might have slipped off or not even started i thought was was useful and the other thing for me that was of significance was particularly around equality and diversity and that link um to uh into bullying harassment and violence at work and actually the fact that some of that feedback it's clear that there has been quite an increase in the number of people experiencing that as a consequence of of race um, and ethnicity um, which i think is is something that that stood out for me in terms of the the feedback in the survey and in terms of a particular theme to perhaps wrap around um, across the organisation to do some work on. Those were, those were two, two key areas for me. Thank you. John, would you like to um, say anything? Um, yeah, thanks, Alex. Um, the first, whilst I, I perhaps do a couple of summary points that um it's a question for people to think about um alex allison claire in particular but anybody um whether you think there's any major themes that have come from today's conversation that we haven't identified as having a sort of clue that we've got um issues to work on um so I'll put, put this on the table. I, th I think we're reasonably sighted on what the issues are, um, but it, it's really important that we we keep that as an open question. But I, I in some ways, um, what I'm saying is um, there's nothing that sort of surprised or alarmed me. I know this is only a, um, a one-off and a relatively small um, section of staff, but I think it's important that we continue to ask ourselves that so that we don't... Um, inadvertently sort of just sort of seal off any potential for other things come forward and um, so that that's sort of one question for people to ponder um but no i don't, I, don't, I haven't really got lots more to add and um, i think this is um just to remind people this is a sort of a, a continuation of the work that we're doing i think it we've had some um, really good um inputs today um tell your colleagues and spread the word. This isn't something that's, um, well, this, that's going to be a triple negative sentence. This is something that you can um, continue to, to join in on and dip into, contribute to, and we're going to build a sort of repository and a, um, an engagement um, piece across our um, comms and engagement channels to really enable um, this to become increasingly open and active and sort of inspiring space for everybody um, and Alex and Yolanda's team and others will be contributing to it um, so um, that's probably as much as I want to say thanks for now Alex very much that's great thank you ever so much John um, was there anything else i can see a chat going on between catherine and trish in the in the chat but um is there any is there anything um is there any final words that anybody would like to anything that you've not had the chance to to say that you'd like to that you'd like to no just to highlight then the next steps following today is really to um to um gather all of this information to share that across the organization um and um and really to um to start to communicate what the themes are um and as you say john i think it's reassuring that there's there's some elements of the um or most of the elements are um that have come up um of of um are you know identified but there are so i think there were a couple of areas that we really need to focus on and and put some work on with regards to really showcasing some of the fantastic work as well um so not just focusing on the negatives as um so so that's that's fantastic um but if as i say if there's anything at any time that anybody wants to to um share ask comment on please email staff engagement or myself um and i'm more than happy to to do that work and hopefully um th th we'll be able to replicate this work across the across the organization and really start to to push on um on listening to what's been said from the staff survey 
So thank you ever so much. Um, and uh, with three minutes to go, I can see some. <laughs> so, oh, the, the chat's going nuts. But um, if there's, um, as I say, thank you ever so much. Um, absolutely everything will be available online, Trish. So, yeah, we're on the staff survey page, I'm going to um, add all of the information from today, the overall themes, and we'll just keep, to, we'll just, um, keep having these discussions. So thank you. Thanks, Alex. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Thank everyone. you so much. Take care. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.